In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages PowerPoint 82 and 83 in which we're going to animate objects. Animation lets you control how objects and text appear and move on the screen during a slideshow and allows you to manage the flow of information and emphasize specific facts. You can animate text, pictures, sounds, hyperlinks, smart art diagrams, charts, and individual chart elements. For example, you can apply a fade animation to bulleted text so each paragraph enters the slide separately from others. Animation are organized into four categories, entrance, emphasis, exit, and motion pass. The entrance and exit animations cause an object to enter or exit the slide with an effect. The emphasis animation causes an object uh, visible on the slide to have an effect and a motion path animation causes an object to move on a specified path on the slide. Let's now take a look at the steps on page PowerPoint 82. On step 1, it tells us that we want to double click the slide 3 thumbnail to return to normal view. So we do want to go back to our normal view and have our slide 3 thumbnail visible here. Then we want to click on the animations tab on the ribbon. Then we want to click on our circle shapes object, the one that we created a couple units ago. Now the text as well as other objects like a picture can be animated during the slideshow. Next on step 2 it tells us that we want to click on the more button in the animation group. So here's our animation group, it's our largest group on here. And we're going to click on this more button here and of course here are our different groups that we can take a look at. Of course we have none, entrance, emphasis, exit, and then we have our motion pass. Which actually I like playing with the motion pass because you can make it go all over your screen and eventually end up right back to where it came from. Uh, it's a lot of fun things that you can do with that. But what we're going to do is, is that it tells us that we want to click on spin in the emphasis section. So here in our emphasis section we want to click on spin. So we click on spin here and of course we now notice that animations can be serious and businesslike or they can be humorous. So be sure to choose the appropriate effects for your presentation. And of course we'll notice that a small number one uh, called an animation tag appears at the top corner of the object. Uh, so when we have that selected you know on there it will have that small animation tag on there as well. And of course the animation tags identify the order in which the objects are animated during the slideshow. Now it's, uh, of course a uh, quick tip as well, it says there are additional animation options for each animation category located at the bottom of the animations gallery. Now on step 3 it tells us that we want to click the effect, op the effect options button in the animation group. So we have the animation here, and we're going to click on the Effect Options. And it tells us here that we're going to click on Two Spins. So now we're going to have two spins here. And in addition, it tells us that we're going to click on the Duration Up arrow to where this has three seconds. Now the Effect Options are different for every animation. And some animations don't have any effect options at all. Now changing the animation timing increases the duration of the animation and gives it a more dramatic effect. Now of course compare your screen to figure D-10 that's on page PowerPoint 83. Next uh, we're going to go on step 4 and it tells us that we're going to click on the slideshow button on the status bar And then, uh, when we see slide 4, we're going to see there is our animation. And once we see that on there, and as soon as we see slide 4, we're going to hit our escape key. And that's going to take us back out to normal view. Now, after the slide, or slide transition finishes, the shapes object spins twice for a total of 3 seconds. And then, of course, then it will continue on, uh, and then it will move on to the next slide. Uh, after the total of eight seconds have passed. 
In step number five, it tells us that we want to scroll up a little bit and we're going to click on the slide to thumbnail in the thumbnails pane. And then we want to click on the bulleted list text object. Then next, it tells us that we're going to click the float in in the animation group. Now this one is already displayed in our um, primary animation group here, so we're going to click on float in. And of course now you see the preview of the animation there. And of course the text object is animated with the float in animation. Each line of text has an animation tag with each paragraph displaying a different number. Now accordingly, each paragraph is animated separately. Now of course you can also take a look and there is an animation pane to where you can see uh, some of the different uh, tags that are placed on there as well if there are multiple animations going on on your screen as well. On step six, it tells us that we're going to click on the effects uh, options button in the animation group and then we're going to click on all at once and of course that is going to move all the text up at once and then we're going to click on the duration up arrow here so instead of one second we're going to take this up to 2.5 seconds and then we're going to click on the preview button here and that is in the preview group and of course we're going to notice that the animation tags for each line of the text and the text object now have the same numeral one indicating that each line of text animates at the same time. Next, in step 7, it tells us that we're going to click Canadian in the title text object. So we're going to click up here. And then of course in the animations, and then we're going to click on the more in the animations group. And we're going to scroll down and click on loops in the motions pass section. So here's our motions path and we're going to click on loops here. So now we notice that our title is now going to loop around. Now a motion path object will appear over the shape object and identifies the direction and shape or path of the animation. Now when needed you can move, resize, and change the direction of the motion path. Now of course notice that the number 2 um, on there and of course you can see that in the animation pane as well. Um, animation tag next to the title object indicating that it is animated after the bulleted list text object. And of course compare your screen um, with what you see on figure D-11. Then next, uh, of course a quick tip first, if you want to individually animate parts of a grouped object then you must ungroup the objects before you animate them. Next, on step 8, it tells us that we want to click the Move Earlier button in the Timing group. And move Earlier button in the Timing group. So we're going to go up here to our Timing group and we're going to click the Up arrow to move earlier. And of course you'll notice that where I've clicked on the Animation pane, let's move that up to the number 1 position. And then we're going to click the From Beginning button in the Start Slideshow group. So we're going to go up to the um, Slideshow tab. And then we're going to go to the From Beginning in the Start Slideshow. And then we're going to go ahead and let this roll again for the first little bit. Now when we do that, the slideshow begins from slide 1. And of course the animations make the presentation more interesting to view. And of course here we go with slide 2. There goes our title looping around. And then of course here comes in our text fading in. And then of course our transition. Give it a second. And then there goes our object spinning around a couple times. And then of course as it moves on again. Now, of course, once we reach to the end of the presentation again and we see the black slide, we can press enter and then we're going to save our changes. Now, of course, we've already uh, seen this again, but uh, on page uh, PowerPoint 83, it talks a little bit about attaching sound to an animation. 
Now text or objects that have animation applied can be customized further by attaching a sound for extra emphasis. First you want to select the animated object. Then on the animations tab you can click on the animation pane button in the advanced animation group which I opened up for you just a little bit ago. And in the animation pane you can click the animation you want to apply the sound to and then click the animation list arrow. Then click effect options to open the animation effects dialog box and in the enhancements section you can click the sound list arrow and choose the sound. Then click OK when you are finished and now when you run the slideshow the sound you applied will play with the animation. And to kind of speed up this PowerPoint presentation a little bit I'm just going to go ahead and move it forward just a little bit to where we get to our slideshow. You can just press your spacebar and then go ahead and save your presentation. There we go, we've got it saved. Now you're ready to move on to the next video in which we're going to use proofing and language tools.